Hello everybody. Hello. And welcome again to another lesson in the tabernacle. Ah, exciting. Hi. So last week we looked at the Ark of the Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember what was inside? Oh the Ark? yeah. What was it, buddy? Eh, uh, eh, uh, the law. Yes, the law. And there were two other things. <laughs> what? Eh. Uh, a pot of manna. A golden pot of manna. And what's the last one? <laughs> yes, buddy. Uh, the staff of Aaron. Aaron's staff that budded and <laughs> grew almonds, right? Yeah. Yes. That reminds me of my name. Buddy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, there were three things in the ark, right? And if we look, oh. we've said them. If we I look inside. Already. Can we still see those three things in here? Are they still in the most holy place? Inside what the think, Ark Adam? of the Covenant? Yep. They are there. They are still there. I the pot, the rod, and the um, law. Okay. So, what did those remind the Israelites of, <laughs> buddy? Uh, that they weren't really good. That's right, they weren't really good. So, could they fill the whole law? No. No. Could they, uh, what, or why did they get the manna? What? Because they complained. They complained. Oh no! That's right, that's why they got the manna. Oh. And then, the last thing was the rod. What, why did the rod have to bud and flower? Because nobody trusted. Nobody trusted that Aaron should be the priest. That Aaron should be the priest. Oh no. And who chose Aaron to be the priest? God. God did. So they didn't like God's choice. So they grumbled, they complained, they were definitely not perfect. That's right? not good. And they were rebellious again and again. So if we look at that Ark of the Covenant, that's what we see. We see the manna, the grumbling, we see the rod, the rebellion, and we see the law that they couldn't keep. Ah. Hmm. So, and we learned that this was a place where God said he was going to meet the people, right? And here we have all the bad things that they did. That's all obvious. Not good. And when we do something wrong, we, people often try to cover it up, don't they? Hmm. Oh. You don't want people to know when you've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. So, if we think about the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, do you know that story? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, you know that story? I do. So, God asked them not to eat a certain fruit. And when they did eat that fruit, what happened? They got kicked out of the garden. They got kicked out of the garden. And yeah. before that, what happened before ah. they got kicked out, buddy? Eh. Uh. They put some figs on them. Figs? Well, Fig trees. leaves. Fig leaves. So, leaves. Sorry, sorry. That's right. Yeah. They put some leaves on themselves oh, yeah. because they were naked. They were naked and they could see. It says, is that embarrassing? It says in the Bible that their eyes were opened when they ate of the fruit. Their eyes were opened and they could see something that they didn't have a problem with before. Right? They didn't have a problem with it before, but they tried to hide. And are leaves a really good covering? Nope. No, no. you wouldn't want to wear leaves. No. So then what did <laughs> what did God do? Killed an animal. He killed an animal. Why? So that he could make clothes. Make some clothes, so it would have been leather. So God had to kill an animal to make them clothing that was better than leaves. Oh. And that was a consequence of their sin that an animal had to die and this was not the way God wanted things to be no but if he just left them the way they were then what would happen they'd make themselves their own clothes they would make themselves their own clothes but they'd be really far away from God right and God can't look at any sin and their sin would be visible all the time they would always be struggling they might not even think to kill an animal right so god had to do that for them and god also had to send them out of the garden like you said they were kicked out god sent them out of the garden away from his presence because the bible tells us is the verse in habakkuk 1 that says 
that God's eyes are too pure to look on anything evil. He cannot tolerate anything wrong, so they have to go away from God's presence. Kind of sad. It mm. is. It is sad. Mm -hmm. So the people that God created to have a perfect relationship with himself and with each other, they were now separated from him, far away. But he still loved them. Yeah, it's okay, buddy. This is not the end of the story. We're just starting. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Oh, that's good. That's good. Good news? Mm -hmm. Good oh, news. I just like wait. Good the news. good news is about to come. <sighs> <laughs> okay. So God still loved them. He wanted to make a way to have a good relationship with them again, right? That's what we've been learning about in here. And so um, there was only one way. Then that sin had to be covered, right? Needed to be dealt with, paid for somehow. And so God provided an example for a perfect covering um, with the last piece of furniture in the tabernacle. So here's our... Box. Can I open it? Yes, Adam can help you open it again. And we'll see what that last piece of furniture is. What is that? What is that? That looks like a spaceship. A spaceship. Maybe Adam can pull it out. And this is not, nobody really knows what it looked like actually. That doesn't it look like a different thing. That looks like a very different what thing. Let's read this? about it here. So we're going to read Exodus 25 and find out what this last piece is. Exodus 25, verse 17, all the way to verse 22. Then make the ark's cover, the place of atonement, out of pure gold. It must be three and three quarters feet long and two and a quarter feet wide. Then used hammered gold to make two cherubim and placed them at the two ends of the atonement cover. Attach the cherubim to each end of the atonement cover, making it all one piece. The cherubim will face each other, looking down on the atonement cover with their wings spread out above it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant which I will give to you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the ark of the covenant. From there, I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. So, from that reading, can you tell what this was called? The lid. Like the lid, they called it a cover. What kind of a cover? Of the ark. Of the cover for the ark, but it was called an atonement cover. An atonement. Do you remember the word atonement? Oh, yeah. yeah? At one mint. At one mint. And this is the atonement cover. So this is the cover that went on top of the lid. This is what somebody thinks it may have looked like. What, what, what a cherubims. What are cherubims? So cherubim are like angels. So here's another picture that someone has made of what it may have looked like. Okay, so we've got this last piece called an atonement cover. Some people also call it a mercy seat. Okay, because God was going to meet them there. And what was it made out of? Gold. Gold, pure gold, mm -hmm. right? Only gold. Only gold. And that reminds us of God pure, right? And it's all one piece. But there was no statue of God, right? Or an animal or something like that. This was just the cherubim, like angels, that had their heads bowed. So you can see in this picture here that their heads are bowed and their wings are stretched out. And it must have been very beautiful. Yeah. But do you remember how often someone went into the holy, most holy place. I know. I yes, know. buddy. Only one time a year. Once a year. Only once a mm -hmm. year. Did they ever go into that most holy place? And when the high priest, it was only the high priest who mm -hmm. would go in there. He didn't just go to look at the beautiful atonement cover, right? He had to go in there and he had a job to do. 
He needed to make atonement for the sins of all the people, and he could only go if he brought some blood from the offering, some coal, some incense, and he went in there, and he had to sprinkle the blood on the seat and offer the incense, and then he was to meet with God, and wow. God would give instructions to him from that spot. So he wasn't just in there like looking in a museum, right? He had a job to do, and it was a very serious job. Oh. Mm -hmm. So he went in there to meet with God, and this was like, it says like a seat. What kind of a person sits on a golden seat? A king. A king, exactly. Oh yeah. A king a sits king. on a golden seat. Okay, or a queen. Yeah. And this is where God chose to make his throne. So let's turn to Psalm 99 verse 1 and we'll see that that was called the throne of God. God. Mm -hmm. So we'll hand this to Adam and he can read Psalm 99 verse 1. The Lord is king. Let the nations tremble. He sits on the throne between the cherubim. Let the whole earth quake. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Trembling and quaking. And the Lord is king. And he sits on his throne between the cherubim. So they're talking about this atonement cover. Okay, so God meets the priest over top of this blood-stained covering. I'll put it on the ark here. Over the ark of the covenant. Oh, my hands are too big. There we go. And it just sits on top of there. And now... I can help with my hand? I think your hand's a little too big too, oh, really? buddy. Yeah. yeah. Huh. But there we have it. So that's the blood stain covering over the sins of the people. So God's meeting them at this covering. It's all gold, but it's covered with blood. And it's over top of these reminders of the people's sin oh, inside yeah. the ark. That's kind of... Strange, right? But when God now looks down, what he sees is the covering with the blood, and he can't see necessarily. I mean, God knows everything, but for what we think is that he can't see the sin anymore. It's covered. No, it's covered. Right? Yeah. The atonement cover. Hmm. All right? Or the mercy seat. So it's kind of strange, but this blood is what Jesus provided in our place. So this is the good news now the good right? news the good news oh yeah so jesus provided that blood in our place so part of what we celebrate at easter time that we just celebrated is that when jesus died on the cross that this veil here the really thick veil was torn from top to bottom oh we said that the priest could never have done that he was too small or oh, yeah. the veil was too high. And it was a thick winter coat, you said. That's right, right like a thick winter blanket. And it yeah. was torn from top to bottom. Matthew 27, verse 51, tells us that this happened around the time of the evening sacrifice. So the priest would have been in there, like here, he would have been in there offering the evening prayers and sacrifice. And that thing would have ripped from top to bottom, and it must have been very shocking for him. Um, but uh, that's the way God chose to make a way for his people to come directly into that most holy place, right? Through Jesus' death. So there's no temple anymore, no. right? They can't get in the temple. No. And they can't make sacrifices anymore, and God doesn't require sacrifices anymore, right? He no. doesn't need a lot of sacrifices because we have one sacrifice, no more animals. It was Jesus, right? So because of what Jesus did, there's a way for anyone who believes in him to be blameless and pure before God, and they can come right into his presence. No more sacrifices and not just once a year, but always, every day. So we're going to turn in our Bibles to Hebrews 10, verse 22. So grab your Bibles and turn to Hebrews at the end of the New Testament. 
Hebrews 10.22. And that says, Let us go right into the presence of God with true hearts, fully trusting Him. For our evil consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So there we see that Jesus is our perfect covering. So we don't need the temple. No, we don't need the temple. And there is no temple anymore. Well, that's what we're just about to get to. Jesus' death made a way for us to come and have peace with God. And he does that on the inside, right? He makes us new from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So God has made a way for our hearts to be a place for him to live. So he can live inside us and that makes us a living tabernacle. A tabernacle? Yes, a living tabernacle. Wow. Alive and walking around. Yeah. So I think it would be good for everybody to take some time to thank God for what he's done. That he's given us a way to come right into his presence that we have Jesus and we can thank God for Jesus and then he will give us his perfect peace inside us and wherever we go we can be spreading this beautiful aroma and people can meet God when they meet us. That is good news. It is good news. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Right? The beginning yeah. of a new relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Oh yeah. Yeah. And we'll hope to see you again next week. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone.